Hello, it's me, Andy, Born Fix Gaming. I hope we're having a great day, getting ready for the weekend. It's a bit chilly in the UK. Okay, new review, motherboard. This one from Aswell. I've never ever purchased an Aswell motherboard in my life, so this is the first. And this is the H610M HDV slash M2 motherboard. Comes in a nice blue box. Um, comes from some odd features I've never seen before. Or oh, I thought it was out of date, but this one comes with something I've definitely not come across in a long time. So in the box we have one USB. We have a manual. We have one IO shield. Don't lose. Yeah, only comes with a motherboard. We have SATA connectors. One with a 90 degrees angle. Yeah, only one comes with a 90 degrees angle. Not sure what I didn't do on both. But. So we have two bags. Why can't I use one bag? Of M2 screws. One motherboard with a very thick anti-static bag. Put that in there. There it is, all in all its glory. It's a small ball, that's uh, a dead set. It's not a uh, big old. Um, yeah, it's tiny. Uh, it, I think we got it for around the 85 pound mark from Scan, around that, but that sort of price. Um, so yeah, so what we got uh, at the top, we have. The 8 pin power supply for the CPU. But also, at the top, we have a CPU fan connector, and one in the corner is a system fan connector. Around the side, we have a display port, one HDMI, one VGA port, a PS2. We have two blue USB, um, let's check what they were now, I've got wrote down somewhere, 3.2s, so the blue ones are 3.2, and we've got two black ones, a USB 2, with a 1 gig LAN on the top. We have 7.1 surround sound, and the bracket is one microphone, front speakers, back speakers. At the bottom, now I've got to look, turn it around this way so I can see, we have one auto connector. We have a connector there which is actually not listed in the manual, so I don't know what that's for. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a three pin connector, uh, no idea what it is. Um, then to the right we have a communication port, then we have something a bit weird I've not come across I, mean, I might have seen it years ago but I just completely forgot about it um, we have a USB 2 with a 9 pin and then we have another USB 2 with only 4 pins uh, as I said I can't remember ever coming across a 4 pin USB 2 socket Either. I mean they obviously exist because I checked it on the net and they do exist but it's a long time since I've seen one Next to that, we have another um, system fan header. Then we have, um, next to that, we have the uh, BIOS reset jumper. Then in the bottom corner, we have uh, the front panel header. So we've got power button, um, reset switch, system lights, hard drive lights. And speaker. On top of that, we have the TPM header. 
Also at the bottom we have a USB M2, sorry USB, get it together. We have the M2 socket for storage. Uh, and on the bottom, on the left hand side, we have another M2 with Wi-Fi socket. So that takes the ASWOC uh, U2 kit, if I remember rightly, uh, which you can purchase uh, from ASWOC or one of their providers. It has PCI Express um, Time 16 version 4 for your graphic card and PCI Express 3 times 1 for two sockets at the bottom. So coming up the right hand side we have two uh, SATA ports facing outwards, two facing upwards and caught in there uh, their web page if you use the M2 the SATA 3 port uh, it gets disabled on top of them we have USB 3.2 header then we have the 24 pin power supply socket for the motherboard and slightly in from that we have two dim sockets supporting 64 gigs of memory run that 3200 megahertz, megahertz. So this has been um this is a basic basic board. Now when you compare it to the ASUS, uh, now they test their memory right up to five thousand um something memory. Now this only goes up to three thousand two hundred megahertz, according to the uh the spec sheet. So don't expect don't go buying any expensive memory. And it only supports um XMP profiles up to version two. So this is not going to go big time on memory. It basically just saying it's a buddy ball. You ain't getting anything out of it. So it comes with one, two, three uh, system fan headers plus the CPU header. And in the middle we have the heavy duty CPU bracket, which I don't like. Because uh, I think it's uh, really stiff and it's nasty and it, uh, it's a bit horrid. Now, I don't know if you know, I will put a link up there yeah, to Anantec. Not to put you off, but um, I don't know if you've seen, but um, it's not just on Anantec. Some other people have stated it as well. With this bracket, Elder Lake CPUs are bending out of shape. I don't, so I don't know if that's the whole range or just the top end ones where they get really hot and bend in that shape. I don't know. I'm not really read into it too much. Um, but even though there was a company on the net, all these stated they have, they have a new bracket design to solve the problem. Now, Intel haven't changed their minds yet. They're just saying, no, it's fine. But when it's bending out of shape, when you put your cooler on, the cooler don't sit flat. So your temperatures go a bit doing that so um, just to let you know, okay, it's, uh, it's an elderly fault. So hopefully they will fix that and it might be just a, a rare occasion that you may get. There's the board. Um, it's black. Uh, it's got gray stripes going across it. The writing on it is gray, which I can't, I'm not quite sure why I make a black mother board with grey writing because it's, I find it quite hard to, to read. Okay, but that's me. I'm getting old. What can I say? It is a six power phase design motherboard. Um, at the end of the day, um, but we'll see how, how hot it gets. It's got no uh, heat sinks except on the uh, chipset heat sink. There's none for the VRMs at all. Um, so, We'll see how hot it gets. We would test it with a 2600K. Uh, because I certainly wouldn't expect to you know, put anything over a 2600K on a budget board. I mean, you shouldn't be anyway. Um, I mean, ideally, up to 12400. 26, 27, 25. I'd probably expect you to get a decent B-series board. Talk about £150, £160 board. Then after that, it's all in Z series, really. Um, but we'll see, see where it goes. Um, I'll say it's got one gig of LAM, 
Not miss anything else. That's about it really. Um, except like I said, that is definitely um, something I've not come across for a long time. Um, if I come across it at all, I mean I've not noticed it <laughs> for a while. Uh, a four pin USB uh, header. Um, that could be a bit of a pain. Um, we it's only got one, uh, nine pin one, because if you're going to fit um, fans, and if you look at all the controllers, all the controllers all have a nine pin header, and sometimes I want you to use both. Okay, um, we're a benchmark it, and we'll see how good it is, how hot it gets. How it runs and what the scores come out in Sydney bench and things like fire strike. We won't do no gaming on it, we're just obviously just testing the ball, see how hot we can get it. And if it gets too hot, and we'll just let you know, it's ain't done bother. So I've got Time Spy up, uh, score 890 or 12,346 for the CPU. And you can see that the CPU is throttling back and forth like no tomorrow. We're out on the purple line. Um, it's having a bad day, really. So the CPU is getting up to around 60, or maybe a little higher. Um, but the thermal throttling is just going back and forward. I mean, I wouldn't say 60 hot. Uh, and God, man, we are using the Arctic i35 cooler. Um, so yeah, it's it's a bit odd the way it's been set up. And don't forget, we are at 95 watts. So we click over to the CPU profile test. And you can see we get a good score, 7984, 8000. I'm not quite sure the 16 threads comes out higher than the max threads. Um, uh, pass on me. <laughs> Something I'll have to ask uh, for new mark about. So this test is all about the CPU, not like the other one where it's a, it's a mixture of both. You can see we're getting up to around 60C still. And we're now literally maxing out the CPU constantly running. Got a member. We are running out a 95 watt setting in a BIOS. This is not the standard setting. It'd be a lot slower if it was. So this is PC Mark 10, uh, score 47 uh, and something. Um, this is a lot more in depth. This does like video conferencing testing, spreadsheet testing, uh, other workloads. See how well your CPU runs. I mean, obviously we don't expect it to struggle um, on anything again, we obviously get into the maximum CPU temperature uh, with this cooler, and obviously the CPU is still doing its maximum uh, running. So I'm not losing a massive load of CPU power. Um, what is wise? So yeah, it's under control. It's not like the old 11th gen, which was like really bad. Okay, you're 12 8. 12.9, they, they use quite a lot of power, uh, but again, it's not as bad as 11 of Gen. Now, if we look at the scores, um, I've done two for Cinebench, one on standard bar settings, and one at 95 watts settings, and, and there was at least 2,000 benchmarks difference between the two. Yeah, you're not gonna get a maximum performance at default settings on the CPU unless you change something. Now, 95 watts, yeah, okay, um, you might want to do some tweaking, because 95 watts does put the temperature up, up, up on the VRMs. We're getting up to 85C in some places. Yeah, so I did a new Blender uh, version 3 benchmark. Now you've got to go online to get the score. Uh, 237. I uh, don't know if that's good or bad. I didn't actually check the listing, see where it came. But, um, but yeah, it was all right. Again, it don't take long to do. You just got to go online. You got to have an account now to get the score. Now, yeah, maximum CPU temperature with this cooler was 70 C. Never really went over that, uh, regardless. Um, which was odd because even when it was running on normal mode, we was only ever getting up to like 62 C, and but she kept thermal throttling backwards um, to get the 15,000 score. And I thought, well, you ain't really getting hot. Why don't you go straight up? until you get to a, a decent temperature but the way uh the fault bars works um it didn't want to go on seeing bench up to over fifteen thousand unless i change the settings now just to let you know um, i did turn the thermal throttling off 
Now, I don't know if I've got a fault with this board, but uh, when I turned it off, it just refused to run. Uh, basically, the board just would not start. End of story. And when you change the voltage up to 95 watts, again, sometimes it won't start. Um, I had to restart it like two or three times to get it going, just to let you know. Yeah, the board itself, even though it didn't crash when I was doing the one hour stress test with City Bench, uh, changing to some of the BIOS settings, uh, it just don't like. Uh, at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's a funny board. Again, it's a basic board, and when you think about it, it only supports 3200 megahertz. Yes, memory. I did actually go on their site, check the listing, and yes, they've only tested it up to 3200 megahertz. So basically, they're not, uh, it's, it's not going to be stable when you're trying to give it too much uh, wattage or anything like that. So um, overclocking is basically, don't even try it really. Not with this board. This board is not good enough really uh, at the end of the day it is a basic basic board would i buy another board again um is that an option the answer would be no i mean it is basic uh now i've got no problem with things being basic um but i do like things to work um yeah i mean it's only got four usbs uh and again I mean, if you go back to level gen level gen boards had better features than this board and they're like 50 pound so why is this 85 pound upwards uh i don't really know really okay the asus board is way more expensive um than this one but at least it works no problem but we have got the gigabyte board to check and we'll see how that comes out uh next week okay that is all have fun and i'll see you in the next one and don't forget to subscribe